Patch 2.6.6 just hit PTR last Thursday, and in this video, we're going to show you guys exactly what changed and how it affects the game of Diablo 3. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, instead of just sitting here and reading the patch notes, guys, we're going to actually go through them and show you guys exactly what they mean and how they affect you or your build. So straight away, they tell us the season 18 seasonal buff, the season of Triune. The TLDR on the new seasonal theme is that basically every single time you hit a mob, you have a chance to spawn a circle. Just like the Oculus ring that you usually put on your Templar, it just spawns the circle on the ground where if you stand in it, you get a buff. Now there are three different colors of circles. One is blue, which gives you uh, reduced resource cost reduction. The second is purple, which gives you increased damage, 100% increased damage. And the last is this like bluish turquoise circle that increases your cooldown greatly while you're standing in it. Now there are some important things to note with these circles. So one, the dark blue circle, which is the resource cost reduction circle, does actually increase your sheet resource cost reduction. And that has some synergy with some of the changes that came as part of this patch. And we'll get into that in a minute. The purple circle does exactly what you would think and just increases your damage by 100%. And then the turquoise slash blue circle is the cooldown circle. Now, this doesn't increase your sheet cooldown. It just decreases the cooldowns while you're standing in it. So if you pop land the dead, for example, you'll see your cooldown go down like crazy while you stand in the circle. Now, the important thing to note about all three is that they can stack with the Oculus circle. So if you get circles that, you know, overlap each other, like a Venn diagram, if you stand here, you get both. So naturally, any kind of overlap is going to be really, really strong. The new flavor of time reads the pylon effects last twice as long, which is a pretty powerful secondary effect. The good thing about flavor of time, it's one of the few items in the game that can actually roll five primary stats. The unfortunate thing about that is that there's so many bad stats still on amulets that it's still going to be really hard to get a really well rolled flavor of time. I would compare it to you know, getting a really well-rolled compass rose. You know, things like armor and life regen are going to show up on rolls, and it's just going to be really hard to get one that's, like, just perfect. But the good news is that the secondary effect that pylons can last twice as long, that can be cubed. So this obviously has some huge GR pushing implications. You know, having pylons that last twice as long, you know, a conduit lasts a minute instead of 30 seconds. A shield pylon lasts two minutes instead of one minute. You know, if you're speedrunning GRs and, say, doing them in three minutes, this basically means you'll have a pylon up 100% of the time almost. <laughs> so overall, a very good change. Moving on to the Executioner, which is a two-hand axe. Uh, attacks will slay enemies with less than 5 to 10% health. So that, of course, is a range, 5 to 10%. If you cube it, you get that full 10%. I feel like this is just uh, Blizzard's way of giving all classes a curse of frailty from the Necro. I could see this being a best in slot for support builds, but outside of that, I don't see that it's going to get used very much. Stone Gauntlets, this one's kind of strange. Getting attack will slowly turn you st to stone, and that's of course what the tooltip says. Now, a little side tangent, I'm not a fan of items like this where, you know, a new player comes into the game and they say, getting attacked will tr slowly turn you to stone. What does that even mean? So, I'd love to see Blizzard put what it actually does on the item, which is you gain 50% more armor, but your movement speed is reduced by 15%, and attack speed is reduced by 20%, and then stacks up to five times. So at five stacks, you gain 100% reduced attack speed, 250% more armor, and 75% reduced movement speed. Now, I could see this maybe benefiting classes that don't necessarily need attack speed, like maybe like a Thorn's Necro, but I think the attack speed reduction really kind of kills the item but we'll see i'm sure someone will come up with something that's, that's very strong echoing fury one of the best items from vanilla diablo first it kind of suffers from the same problem it just says slaying enemy engulfs the wielder into a frenzy what does that even mean to a player but basically what it means is killing enemies increases your attack speed by 15 percent and movement speed by five percent and stacking up to five times so we get 75 percent attack speed and 25 percent movement speed at full stacks now the important thing to note here it says killing enemies not hitting enemies. So naturally it's gonna have some great implications for you know speed farming, builds where you can kill a lot of enemies fast, and of course, uh, almost dead in the water against a Rift Guardian unless it has adds. So we're seeing this in you know, some Whirlwind Bar builds. Uh, you can actually use this as a Necro early season and it'll be quite good until you can get the size that you need if it just happens to drop. But overall, you know, it's it's a thousand times better than it was before. So one of the stronger changes in my opinion is Squirt's Necklace, new legendary power, 
While not taking damage, your damage is increased up to 100% and damage taken is increased by up to 50%. Now this item is really interesting because it operates just like the Endless Walk set. So that's the Compass Rose, the Traveler's Pledge, where it's kind of like a teeter-totter where if you're, if you're moving, you get that a damage reduction. If you're standing still, you get the damage increase. It's exactly the same with Squirt's Necklace. The only problem is you have no buff on your buff bar to tell you whether or not that's happening. But it is, in fact, happening. Basically, if you take damage, you know, it slowly scales back to doing no extra damage. Whereas if you don't take damage, it slowly scales back to doing extra damage. So the point of Squirts is just avoid all incoming damage. At the cost, of course, of taking more damage. So this would be really good for builds that don't take a lot of damage or builds that can shield themselves from damage or builds that just stay really far away and maybe off screen kill mobs. Reaver, uh, I wasn't actually sure about Reaver at first, but basically the reduce the remaining cooldown of one of your skills by one second when you slay an enemy. Now again, because it says that text when you slay an enemy, the implications of this is, is more towards speed builds because again, you're not gonna be killing a ton of mobs when you fight a Rift Guardian. But this item has turned out to be quite fun. In, in fact, you know, for Classes like Necro, where you have builds that revolve around Land of Dead, this basically gives us 100% uptime on Land of Dead, and we're going to come out with a, a build guide for you guys very soon that uses this new item. But overall, you know, a good change, and again, a thousand times better than it was before. Now, this next one um, isn't controversial per se, but it was once upon a time. Mortix Brace, so the full story for you guys that haven't been playing Diablo that long, Mortix Brace was like an item they were going to add in Season 3, Season 4, and at the last second before it went live, they yanked it out of the game. And it was this big uproar from the community. And at the time, it kind of made sense because it would have made barbs like really, really powerful. But they decided to kind of reintroduce it to the game, which is great. Now, this is nice because finally we get to play with Mortix Bracers, which is really solid bracers, especially for speed farming. But, you know, the problem is, is that barbs need quite a bit more damage uh, to really kind of catch up to every other class. And this isn't necessarily going to bridge that gap. But it is a solid option for speed farming. So, you know, builds like Whirlwind Barb, builds like Charge Barb. Great way to gain toughness and damage. Overall, a really strong item, but not going to really bridge that gap for Barbarians. Now, finally, Spite. I mean, I don't have this to show you guys because I don't necessarily play Witch Doctors. But basically, the TLDR is it gives you the Humongoid Rune for free on the Gargantian, which is the one that makes it cleave. It's the one that does basically all the damage across the Garg runes. Now this frees up so you can run another Garg rune. The problem is, is the only other Garg rune that's any good is like Wrathful Protector, but it's not blow your mind good and the other runes are actually pretty terrible. So while the item sounds cool, it's not really going to, I feel like, impact Witch Doctors very much, unfortunately. And then one of the biggest changes is they're basically giving you the Season 17 Legacy of Nightmares buff into a legendary gem. And the gem states, while you have no set bonuses equipped, every legendary item you have equipped increases your damage dealt by, you know, blank and reduces your damage taken by 2%. And then that level 25 effect is the bonus is doubled for ancients. So this means quite a few things. So one is we're getting Legacy of Nightmares into a legendary gem. At level 99, this exactly equals the 750% damage modifier that we were getting during the season of Lawn and from the Lawn Rings. This, of course, doesn't stack with the Lawn Rings because the Lawn Rings would be a set, therefore canceling out Legacy of Dreams. Now, the nice thing about this item is that, you know, a lot of the builds that we created for last season were going to be killed basically when the season of Lawn was going to wear off. And this basically keeps them going. You lose one of your legendary gems, which can break some builds, but a nice compromise because people really wanted the Season of Lawn to basically last forever. Now, the extra, extra benefit of this new Legendary Gem is it has increased damage for every Legendary you're wearing with no set bonuses, whereas Legacy of Nightmares was, you know, just blanket damage if you had ancient items on. So this actually just gives you more damage if you don't have set items on while you're wearing it. So it's like a Lawn, but you don't have to have everything ancient. So this would be really nice for getting into, you know, wearing a Legacy of Nightmares build, but you don't have everything ancient yet. Or, you know, if you have, say, six ancients and seven non-ancients, you're still going to be viable. Whereas before, you basically got no benefit from, you know, wearing a non-ancient unless it was a really good ancient effect. So overall, a pretty good change. The other kind of really bog change that's happening in 2.6.6 is the crafted sets are getting an overhaul. Sage is finally getting a, a belt slot so that we can... We can use 
Sage as a Necromancer for the first time ever. And it's obviously more viable across all classes having an additional slot to put it in. The other important thing to note here is Hadrig will automatically learn it at rank 12, which could be a really important thing to note for the start of a season. So when you finish your challenge rift, you know, at the start of every season, because again, guys, save your challenge rift, you can automatically level him to rank 12 and you'll have the recipe available. So as soon as you run your first bounty mat run, you're going to be able to craft Sage set, which could be really good for, for early season. Now, my personal favorite change of all of these changes is the revamp to Captain Crimson's trimmings. Two piece, you get 6k life regen, which is whatever, <laughs> but you also get 20% cooldown reduction and 20% resource cost reduction, which is pretty insane on its own. At three piece, damage dealt is increased by percentage of your cooldown reduction. Damage taken is reduced by your percentage of cost reduction. Now, the really important thing to note here is that is not your sheet cooldown reduction or resource cost reduction. That's a super important thing to know. So you might look immediately be like, okay, I'm wearing captain's three piece and my cool down reduction is 59.13. That's not accurate. You would actually, it's actually the additive percentages on all your pieces of gear. So while my sheet says 59.13, cool down reduction has diminishing returns. So I would have to go through and be like, okay, I have eight on my gloves, eight on my shoulders, 12% on my helmet, 8% on my ring, you know, 20% from wearing captains, 10% on my my weapon, 8% on my offhand, 10% from Paragon. You know, so that alone on this character is 82% cooldown, which is 82% increased damage. And one of the, some of the nice synergies that happen here is, you know, Goguk gives 15% cooldown reduction. So boom, that's another 15% damage with captains. So as you can see, just overall amazing change, you know, especially for Necro, especially for a lot of builds that I like to make with that they're heavy on cooldown reduction. This is just basically another multiply that we're going to get. And it's going to go into almost all of my builds. It's that good. The other really important thing to note here is the other part of the three-piece set bonus where damage taken is reduced by a percentage of your resource cost reduction. So at the bare minimum, with Paragon, you get 10% resource cost reduction. And as part of the set, you get 20%. So just wearing Captain Crimson, three-piece bonus, you get 30% damage reduction, which is fantastic. So, you know, if you can fit it into some of the other pieces of gear, that's just more mitigation that you're going to get. So one of the immediate synergies you're going to notice is Yang's gives you 55% resource cost reduction. If you have Captains on, that's 55% damage reduction. The other synergy you're going to notice right away is what we talked about earlier, where it's the circles, right? So if you get the dark blue circle, that's resource cost reduction. And while you're standing in it, that's increased sheet resource cost reduction. So it's actually damage mitigated while you're standing in the dark blue circle if you're wearing the captains. One of the other really nice changes is the changes to all guilds. Um, basically, damage reduction 15%, increased damage by 30% on two-piece and basically 30% increased damage to elites and reduced damage from elites if on the three-piece bonus. Now you can wear all guilds on you know, wrist, shoulders, torso, head. So this is going to be better for certain classes than for others. For, for example, Crusader can wear captains, acons, all guilds, and focus and restraint. It's going to be fully greened out on a Crusader if you really want. But the most important thing is, A, it's a good change, but B, Early season, this is going to be pretty strong because it's going to be really easy to craft this. It's going to be really easy to get those bonuses equipped. So early season, very, very strong. Finally, there's the cane set revamp. Uh, Two-piece gives you 8% increased attack speed and 50% experience. And three-piece bonus, when a greater rift keystone drops, there's a 25% chance for another one to drop. So for leveling, you know, this could be really strong, the two-piece bonus. And then, you know, late game, there's some implications. If you've got enough damage, you could try to throw some canes on to get more keys if you're key farming and just couldn't keep up with your thirst for keys. And keep in mind the way it's worded, every single time a Greater Rift Keystone drops, there's a 25% chance for an extra one to drop. So, you know, at T16, where you, it drops like four to five Keystones, every single time one of those Keystones drops, a 25% chance for another one to drop. So if you're super lucky, you could get like 10 Keystones from one Rift, which could be really nice for builds, you know, like say Thorns Necro, which are insanely fishy when you're pushing the leaderboards if you just want tons of keys to be able to spend without care maybe this is something that's going to be good for you but that's pretty much going to sum up all the changes you know a lot of good changes in here eight new legendary reworks a new legendary gem the crafted set revamps and a brand new seasonal theme that we've never seen before that's not just double x so i mean overall it's it's a pretty solid set of changes these are some pretty easy wins i think overall and they definitely improve the state of the game Brandy Camel, the community manager, did come out and say that there will shortly be a 
kind of a blog explaining the future of Diablo 3. So that'll be very interesting to check out and of course follow the channel. We'll, we'll bring you guys all the juicy updates with that. But that's basically gonna do it for the video. Let me know in the comment section below what's your favorite change coming in 2.6.6. And of course I'll be playing once the season starts, which we actually don't know the date of yet. But nevertheless, we'll be on grinding away. As always, guys, like, subscribe, come over to Twitch, ask your questions. I love you guys. Peace out.